Hey there, welcome back to another video in our CCNA video series and in this video we are going to talk about fundamentals of Ethernet LANs. Now if we talk about local area networks or LANs, you must have heard so many names about the type of networks that we have. We have got local area network, we have got metropolitan area network, we have got wide area network and there are so, so many small networks as well like personal area network. We have storage area network and we have campus area network and there are so many others as well but there have been some concepts that have been emerging nowadays in the into the production environment like there is one called soho which is small office uh, home office network and uh, it doesn't consist a big network infrastructure while building a soho network and talking about the topologies or talking about the ethernet lands it doesn't have such some of a guideline to be followed to create a, to create a specific network over here but you can say that these are the terms that are referred according to the size of the network uh, network infrastructure that you have for your environment so if we talk about soho then you can have like a router setup over there and we can call it as r1 then you can have a switch along with it we can call it as sw1 and then you can have many devices connected with it as well we can have a pc1 we can have a printer we can have uh, another pc let's say pc2 and we can have another pc let's say pc3 or, or you can have over here that there is a tablet that is connected okay through wireless as well now if you have a certain scenario in your soho network or a home office network and this uh, router of course will be connected to ISP where the internet access can be provided to all the devices that are connected over here so the traffic is always going to go from let's say PC1 to the switch and then it will go to the gateway and then gateway will forward the data out on the ISP and that's how the return traffic will come as well on the router and then it will forward it on the switch and switch will go back to the originating device of the request so this is how communication works. Now the components that are used over here is uh, our devices and we, we have a router. We have a switch which is one of the most important device and then we have the endpoints or you call it as nodes. Okay, We have one, two, three, four and five nodes that are connected to a centralized switch over here. And we use switch because switch is kind of a smart device that lets you connect multiple device in a same uh, network segment you would say now if i want many people to talk with each other the only requirement that i have is to keep the endpoints into the same network and how do we ensure that we need to keep the ip addressing schemes that satisfies the same network requirement so let's say we are using a network called 192.168.1.0 slash 24. Don't bother if you if you don't understand anything about what I'm writing over here because we are going to talk about uh, the IP addressing and the subnetting from the very scratch. So I'm just giving you a scenario over here to you guys so that you can relate that PC1 is having an IP address called 192.168.1.1 and the printer having 1.2 the tablet is having 1.3 pc3 is having 1.4 and pc4 is having 1.5 and let's say our routers interface is having 1.254 as the last usable ip address of the network so if i want pc1 to communicate with pc2 or if i want any of these pcs to be able to print uh, to, to be able to print out the hard copies of their notes or whatever documents that they're dealing with then I need to keep this printer as well into the same network as of as of, as of the devices and there can be scenarios as well where I have some other type of network that we'll be discussing sooner where we are using a common printer for specific floors or for, for different networks then in that scenario as well you can you can take help of some of the advanced concepts like routing in order to be able to send request uh, for printing uh, to the printer from different networks that you are participating in so we'll be dealing with that as well pretty pretty soon 
But talking about the network or the Soho network, this is how you can have a small setup where you can have a router, where you can have another switch that connects multiple devices that you use in your home environment or in your small office environment. And uh, you can even extend this Soho network by connecting it with another device, let's say. And this is nothing uh, more than a, a wireless access point. And that wireless access point gives you the ability to, to ability to connect your laptop. Okay, or your smartphone wirelessly through this device and that can again extend the scenario of your Soho network. So this, this, this is how a typical small office home office networks looks like with a bunch of endpoints with a bunch of centralized uh, connect, connector devices because the best option or the best way you have to connect multiple devices is to use a switch because switch gives you the ability to uh, consume or you can say connect more than more than two devices in a in a small network because it it offers you a large number of switch ports or a large number of ethernet ports uh, that you can connect your cable with because we are we are using uh, the cabling environment over here in order to connect and these cables are ethernet cables okay we are talking about ethernet cables over here so that's how a small Soho network can be related. Again, I'll tell you that these typical, uh, you can say Soho or let's say LAN or let's say MAN doesn't, doesn't follow any guidelines. It, it just according to the size of the network that they define that if this is a LAN or that's, that's a MAN. Because if you have a, a network that extends up to 100 meters, then we'll specifically call it as LAN. If you have multiple lands, that land multiplied by four, then you, you call it as, uh, sorry, not man, you will call it as CAN, campus area network. And if you have so many campuses, okay, that are being connected, campuses multiplied by four, according to the cities, then you will call it as metropolitan area network. And that's, so it's, it's according to the sizes of the network that you are having. And that's how we define the type of networks that we have. Now coming up next, we'll be, we'll be talking about how the cabling and how the Ethernet standards work over there. So let me just erase this stuff over here. So if we talk about Ethernet standards, then we have 10 Mbps, we have another one called 100 Mbps, then we have 1000 Mbps, which we also call it as 1 Gbps, and then we have 10 Gbps. These are kind of the standards that, that we use while connecting. Uh, over a local area network or, or, or a metropolitan area network or a campus area network. And uh, we do use some cabling standards as well that we'll be talking about sooner. But when we talk about the term Ethernet basically refers to kind of the entire family of standards. And some standards define the specifics of how uh, to send data over a particular type of cabling. Because you also have multiple uh, cables as well because you, you got an ethernet cable then you got a copper uh, STP or UTP we are not referring to spanning protocol over here so give it a thought and then we have fiber mode of communication right there are there are other options as well we have rollover we have got console cable and some some other options as well but the ethernet kind of refers to the entire family of standards and these are nothing but the standards that we use in our Ethernet cable. And uh, it also varies according to the speed that we can use the, 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 the cable with to forward our data. And other standards define protocols as well. Or you can say rules that, that the Ethernet nodes must follow to be, to be a part of, an, uh, of a local area network. 
and all these ethernet standards come from their parent which is IEEE who created these standards and I also explained you that when we're discussing about TCP IP being the current existing standard or, or you can say the the networking model that that all the companies use do follow the standards created by IEEE as well TCP IP didn't create it's, didn't create its own standard it just refers to the ones that are that are created by IEEE so you also need to take, keep that in mind and uh, ethernet uh, standards that that comes into uh, from the family of IEEE uh, uses a number called 802 okay and dot you can say 3 as the beginning of the standard name because ethernet kind of supports a large variety of options for uh, for the ethernet cables that we'll be using okay and uh, ethernet kind of includes many standards for different kinds of uh, you can say for copper cabling or for fiber cabling and all so as as i told you we have 10 mbps we have 100 mbps we have 1000 mbps we have uh, okay, 10 gbps as well and then we we have another one which works with 1000 mbps itself but it is not a copper cable it's it's a fiber network so if we talk about the standard names and how it actually works then you can say that the common name that you have is ethernet okay and we call the 100 mbps link as fast ethernet because we are going to deal with fast ethernet ports a lot more when we'll be using our switches or when we'll be using our routers they will have the fast ethernet uh, ports aligned with it and then we call it a gigabit ethernet and uh, to this we, we call it as 10 gig ethernet standard and we also call it as a gigabit ethernet being it a fiber model and if we talk about the official names then the official name for the ethernet is uh, you can say the, the standard name that we talk about so it's 10 base t and 10 is of course the speed that it that it has then you can say that the next one is 100 base t cool and uh, for the gigabit one we, we have 1000 base t and the same thing goes over here as well but we call it as 1000 base LX for the fiber one and then we call this as 10G base T that's that's basically the official names that they use so the cabling standards are all of them are going to be the copper cables and this one is just the fiber one there are official uh, or you could say formal IEEE standard names as well as we call it as 802.3 then we call it as 802.3u okay we call it as 803 oh sorry 802.3ab and then we call it as 802.3an uh, that's what and that's the current uh, wi-fi ports that you have on your mobile phones as well or, or the current IEEE standard that, that is supported on the on most of the mobile phones or most of the routers that we talk about okay and then for the fiber one we have an official formal name which is 802.3 uh, Z that's the official name so you can go over to e uh, internet and uh, look around for the different cabling standards that are available over there you'll find many of them but the most fundamental cabling choice has to do with the material used inside the cable okay because 
maybe we are we are going to connect so many like routers let's say we have a router one over here we are connecting it with another switch and the port that we will be connecting it will be named as fa0/0 where fa fa0/0 means nothing but fast ethernet 0/0 that's the full name of this interface and then you will also have this interface named as fa0/1 that's how it can go forward so we're going to deal with most of the fast ethernet ports and some at some extent we'll be dealing with gigabit ethernet port as well and these two are going to be with us through this entire course so you need to remember them as how how we are going for, for further it so i hope you understand uh, how so that's been all for this bit we talked about the ethernet uh, standards and we talked about the type of networks that you can that you can have where we refer to various networks like lan man wan then a soho network and some of the others we'll be talking about how cisco refers to three way uh, or three layer hierarchical we'll be talking about three layer hierarchical model that Cisco refers to create the uh, you can say topology with and uh, but let's not dig deeper into that concept in, in a like short period of time we'll, we'll explore about the networking and the basics of networking and all uh, and then we'll we'll go further with the knowledge that we need to deal in so that's been all in this particular video and I'll guys see you in the next one thank you for watching